welcome to Trinity. We are grateful that you are here. Um, one, a, our worship this week is as it has been um, throughout the summer season. So we are mostly up on the screens and we have a little bit of an order in our bulletin. If you need a bulletin, we have those up front. Um, if you haven't had a chance to grab your communion uh, cups yet, those are up front and in the back as well. Uh, one real quick note about worship. We know we, we fill our space with, with light and sound and imagery. And so we have the stained glass, which has been here, of course, since the, since the building was constructed. That's, those are pieces of art. And then we have liturgical art around us. And it all has that intent of drawing our eye toward God. And so one new piece of liturgical art that might draw our eye toward God is this new banner that's up here, Walking in the Light, Trinity, 175 years. Uh, Sharon Asp uh, made this and was assisted and got help from Julie Robinson. Um, between the two of them, they, they got this up here. So we have, we're celebrating our anniversary, of course, because this is our anniversary year. But beyond that, with the light and the color and the way that it's laid out, again, our liturgical art is designed to draw our eye towards God. And so I pray that this new piece of art uh, will continue to do that work for us. We're grateful that you are here. We're grateful for those who will gather with us online throughout the week. Let us begin. Thank you, Karen, for getting us ready for worship. Friends, will you please rise as you are able. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Let us pray. Oh God, our strength. Without you, we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside. Cleanse us from all evil that arises from within ourselves that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. We pray in your name. Amen. Let us sing. away. See in this space our fears and our dreamings brought to us light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken 
We shall arise at the sound of your name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty, gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly, give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water, here we will take the bread of new love. Give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in the heaven light clears away. Here in this place, the new light is shining. your own. Gather us in, all peoples together, here of all this flesh of our bones. Our reading for this morning comes from Mark. We are in the seventh chapter. The Pharisees and some legal experts from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. They saw some of his disciples eating food with unclean hands. They're eating without first ritually purifying their hands through washing. The Pharisees and all the Jewish people don't eat without first washing their hands carefully. This is a way of observing the rules handed down by the elders. Upon returning from the marketplace, they don't eat without first immersing themselves. They observe many other rules that have been handed down, such as the washing of cups, jugs, pans, and sleeping mats. So the Pharisees and legal experts asked Jesus, why are your disciples not living according to the rules handed down by the elders, but instead eat food with ritually unclean hands? Jesus replied, Isaiah really knew what he was talking about when he prophesied about you hypocrites. He wrote, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is empty since they teach instructions that are human words. You ignore God's commandment while holding on to rules created by humans and handed down to you. Then Jesus called the crowds again and said, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. Nothing outside of a person can enter and contaminate a person in God's sight. Rather, the things that come out of a person contaminate the person. It's from the inside. From the human heart that evil thoughts come, sexual sin, thefts, murders, adultery, greed, evil actions, deceit, unrestrained immorality, envy, insults, arrogance, foolishness, all these evil things come from the inside and contaminate a person in God's sight. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So I think the first thing that we need to clarify just real quick, just so we're all on the same page about this gospel, Jesus is not saying that you don't have to wash your hands before supper. All right, it's, this is not an anti-masking, anti-COVID kind of a thing. We don't have to call the health department on Jesus, and we still need to wash our dishes and clean our kitchen downstairs because we want to keep that commercial license. With that being said, it's also going to be really easy for us when we hear this text to, to send a side-eye glance at the Pharisees and the legal experts because they've traveled from Jerusalem all the way up to the Galilean region, and they want to challenge Jesus, and it's so easy because we're fans of Jesus to take this text and use it to demonstrate how different our faith is from our Jewish siblings. 
or because of our love of Jesus, we might even think that our faith is better than the faith of our Jewish siblings because as soon as we have that thought, when we start convincing ourselves that our relationship with God is somehow better than someone else's, well, then actually we become, in this text, the Pharisees. We then convince ourselves that we have a knowledge or a truth about God that other people are lacking, so it's our responsibility to tell them something about God that maybe they don't know that will make them closer to God the way that we are already closer to God. It puts us in a position of privilege. It gives us power over others. And I know, no one here is going to claim that we have a higher knowledge, and certainly no one here is going to claim that we're going to use our power against someone else. We are perpetually seeking our relationship with God. I would argue the Pharisees are doing the same thing, at least in their initial intent. They're trying to teach and guide, and they are seeking out the mysteries of God. These rituals and patterns that are referenced in this particular text, they're designed They're handed down by tradition to create reverence for God, to create space for God, to create hearts and minds that are ready to receive God's goodness and mercy. And also, to be fair, our only real experience of these rituals are through a gospel that was written by a fan of Jesus. Mark was probably a Gentile. We don't know for sure because we can't go that far back in Ancestry.com but we got a pretty good idea. And beyond that, we know that verses two through four where Mark takes this whole aside to explain the cleaning of the cups and the mats and going to market and all of that, he's probably explaining it to a non-Jewish Christian community. And the whole reason I even bother to tell us any of that at all is because in our love of Jesus, in our understanding of Jesus, when we see Christ as our liberator, when we talk about the free nature of Christ, Christ, free nature of grace that comes through Christ, we will automatically, in our well-meaningness, in our hope, in our love of Jesus, we will then see the Pharisees as outdated. They're outmoded. They're old-fashioned. They're Old testament as if somehow God has changed somewhere in the turning of the pages from Malachi in the Hebrew writings to Matthew in the Christian writings. And quicker than we would probably even care to confess to Christ, we will find ourselves separating ourselves from our Jewish siblings. We will find our minds drawing distinctions. We will develop, we will construct ideas that are meant to justify the distance between us. We will rationalize all these divisions that are built up by this false perception that one side, it's always the side we're on, that one side is closer to God. This perception of a closeness to God, this perception that one side knows more about God than another, this is, in essence, purity. It's what it means to seek purity, to to refine and to clean and to develop and and to hone in and develop ideas that maybe we are closer to God. Maybe we do know a little bit more about God because we don't waste our time with all of the, the cleaning and all the rituals and all those sorts of things. We just know that God is near. And purity, this perception of closeness to God, it is at the foundation of divisive understandings like anti-Semitism, gender inequality, racism, purity, closeness to God. These ideas have been used to constrain women, to justify slavery, to deny basic human dignity to people who have disabilities, purity. This idea that one person can be closer to God than another, it is a way of thinking and seeing each other in the world. It has led to whiteness as an unspoken and sometimes chanted and shouted measure of human value. I know, we've come a whole long way from talking about cups and spoons. Jesus in this gospel, he's not really talking about cups and spoons either. He doesn't really care about how well we wipe down our kitchen counters. It's about how we're being honest with our relationship with God to acknowledge that we are contaminated by sin. Sin corrupts our lives, it corrupts our church, it corrupts our families, it corrupts our community, it corrupts our place in creation, and it rests firmly within. 
It's in our minds, it's in our hearts, it's in our thoughts, it's in the concepts that are handed down to us by the elders and the traditions that come long before us until all these divisions are subconsciously and unconsciously feel right. They're so powerfully embedded into our lives that we may even become defensive when we hear them being spoken. Jesus, in talking to the Pharisees, Jesus reminding the legal experts, Jesus talking to his disciples, talking to the crowds, talking to we the people. He's reminding us that our nature is wired in sin. We will always turn away from God, even when we are trying to be closer to God and convincing ourselves that we have a path or a pattern to get ourselves closer to God. And our want to be closer to God, to seek that right path to find the best version of ourselves in the best version of God, at least the best version of God that fits our imagination. When we find that route to rightness that works for us, probably designed by us, then our want, our need, will be to convince everybody else that they need to follow our path. Jesus calls this, in this text, hypocrisy. Jesus calls the Pharisees hypocrites because they are using a tradition that was designed to reflect God's glory. It's designed for goodness. And it's being used to shame his disciples. Jesus will come into this space, or spaces just like this, not just Trinity Lutheran Church, but Jesus will call out the church in our hypocrisy when we declare that all are welcome and it is meant to be a proclamation of goodness. And churches will then find ways to make our space unwelcome to new faces. Jesus will call out our nation in our hypocrisy when we claim that all people are created equal. Sorry, I got that wrong. When all men are created equal. And then at the same time, in the same document, we will justify slavery. Jesus isn't really interested in how well we clean our kitchens. Jesus doesn't care how we wash our hands, at least in the context of this particular text. He is confronting sin, sin that continually moves through us. It cuts chasms between us and God's people because we are seeking purity and every effort we make makes us more unclean because of the sin that's embedded in our lives, because all the evil of the world that is brought forth into the world and all the evil that we are forced to bear by others' harm It all comes from within. And no amount of dish soap, no amount of prayer patterns, no liturgical elements, no well-meaning words are going to cut the grime away. It's only Jesus. It's his body and blood that carries our broken bodies and our hearts and our minds. Only Jesus can destroy what lingers within our flesh. Only Jesus can walk among us and draw us out of our walled-off experiences, pull us away from our long-held prejudices. Only Jesus can set us free. Only Christ's Son can die so we can live. Only God can end our destructive habits so that we can make it across the divide, so that we can center on his life, his forgiveness so that we can be removed from the center of every thought. And so we can approach our neighbors with compassion and humility. Only Christ can break us of our longing for closeness to God, of the myth of perfection, so that we can then recognize that the divine is in our classmate, in our coworker, in our fellow human. It's in our forgiveness that we find the humility to hear the riches of God's love. It is in God's grace that we are given this gift of freedom from our past. It is in the presence of God's word that we can witness the power of reconciliation, the joy of striving for equity, the hope that all of these isms that defy our life will be silent, that all of us, that every single one of us will be recognized as being near to God. Jesus speaks in every word, every tradition, every racist ideal, every gender-based slander, every sexist remark, every obstructive barrier, every age-oriented assumption, every limit to every education, every other word, every other deed that's designed by us to keep others away, everything falls away. In the presence of Christ, all goodness, all mercy that comes from God and is meant for creation and our neighbors Through Jesus, it is revealed. Amen. Friends, as we continue to reflect on God's goodness and mercy, 
Will you please rise, you're able, and we will confess our faith by the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, the Lord. Seated at the right hand of the Father, judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Catholic Church, the union of saints, the union of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On behalf of creation, and we who are gathered in this space, and even we who gather online and celebrate and give thanks for God's love, we offer our prayers. Let us pray. Gracious God, bring us closer to you. Free us of our sin and our side-eye glances. Help us to see you in the presence of our neighbors. God of peace, we pray for the people of Afghanistan. We pray for the refugees who are being escorted out. We pray that their escape be safe. Lord, we pray for all of the folks, the millions who will be left behind. We pray for those who will be persecuted because of their identity, because of their culture and their religion. Merciful God, we pray for the soldiers who are hard at work freeing the refugees. We pray especially for the family of the 13 who have died violently. Lord, we pray for the soldiers over all of these years who have done their work, who have faithfully served, who have stood beside their comrades as we see an end to this violence. Lord, we pray for your healing mercy to be upon those with whom we love and who we care for, and we offer to you now those names that linger in our hearts. God, we give you thanks for your healing mercy that comes through doctors and nurses. We pray that you be with them. Grant them your infinite patience and love. Grant them your compassion as they become worn out and fatigued. Lord, we pray for our community. We pray that you grant us a new vision as we live together in these streets and in this zip code in this school district. Lord, we pray that you continue to bind us together, to continue to love each other, care for each other, care for our families and our, and our neighbors. Lord, we give you thanks for teachers. We give you thanks for administrators. We give you thanks for maintenance staff, for kitchen staff, for bus drivers, for all those who are dedicated to the education of our youth. And Lord, we pray for this church. We're 175 years young and we have no idea what next year will bring. So Lord, we pray that you continue to be by our side, grant us your vision and your mercy, grant us your guidance and your hope. God of sustenance and life, we give you thanks for hearing our prayer, hearing our every concern, and celebrating in our joy. We offer these prayers, trusting in your grace and mercy. Together as one body, we close these prayers, as together we say, Amen. Please be seated. We just take a moment in our time in worship to make a couple of announcements, make sure that we're all on the same page of what's going on in the life of our church. So I will call up Kelly, who will be telling us a little bit about Rally Day, which is coming up very, very shortly. And while she comes up, I will hand this to you. Uh, well, September 12th comes first, so why don't you go first? Okay, so I'm here to tell you about September 12th. That's going to be our Rally Day this year. And I want to make sure that everyone knows that it's not just for kids. Everyone is invited. That We're going to celebrate on the lawn. We're going to have some lawn games. We're going to have a craft. And we're also going to have treats. And everyone is welcome, and we would love to see you there. That will also be the kickoff of our Sunday school. And... Oh, Rally Day will be right after the church service, if you're wondering what time it will be. Um, and then after that, we will start Sunday school the following Sunday. 
and that will also take place right after the church services for 30 minutes so that's a little bit different this year um, but we're glad to get back into the swing of things and have Sunday school once again thank you thank you Kelly we're looking forward to that in just a couple of weeks so we hope you're all able to join us for that um, on September 19th so so we've got kind of an action-packed month coming up for us on September 12th, Rally Day, as Kelly has already announced. September 19th, we have Be Our Church Sunday. So if you want to come in, in um, I don't know, less churchy clothes, you can come, you know, ready to clean or do a little bit of work. We're gonna we're gonna wander around this space. We not aimlessly. We have real projects, but we're all gonna kind of move around and give be given our assignments to help spiff up the space because our big anniversary event is October 10th. But we also have another anniversary uh, worship event that's happening September 26. Uh, we'll be hearing some fantastic music from Carol, our own Carol Reckmeyer, and, um, and we'll be continuing our celebrations. So every, almost every weekend of September, we have something going on. One last thing, if you just want to, if you're out and about, just let folks know that tomorrow, Monday, uh, August 30th, is our second vaccination clinic that we'll be hosting here on this site. So if um, you're bumping into somebody, I don't know, at two o'clock in the afternoon, you're at Sullivan's and you get into some sort of conversation about how they haven't had a chance to get their vaccination yet, you can say, hey, Trinity's got a mobile clinic. Just head on by, you don't even have to have your paperwork done, they have tons of volunteers to help us out. So we wanna keep getting that word out that these mobile pop-up clinics are available. We're happy to host them. Friends, we continue our worship service with a confession and forgiveness. Will you please rise as you are able? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God help us. We do not believe there's enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world and the ways we seek. God help us. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your words meant to build community. God help us. We resist your calls for justice and we deny your presence in others. Lord, share with us your words of forgiveness and feed us for life in your world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished by Jesus, the worker of miracles. There's always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. In the name of God, creator, son, and Holy Spirit, you are forgiven and you are loved into abundant life. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please turn and share that peace with your neighbor. People of God, we make ourselves ready to share in this holy meal. There is more than enough grace for each of us. There is more than enough bread to feed all of us. There is more than enough mercy to reach every neighbor among us. We give you thanks, O oh God, for participating in our lives and abiding in our world. You make all things holy. You bless us with simple earthly food that bears life in abundance, bread and wine that binds us to Christ and restores us to do your will. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Confident our Lord is at work in this meal, we offer the prayer that he first taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to uh, reach for your communion kit, and then we will open up together on the bread side. This is the body of Christ given for you. And then we turn it over as we are able, and we open up the cup side. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Friends, let us pray. God of life and light, lead us from your shelter into the presence of our neighbors. Guide our hearts to remember your love for us as a sign of your infinite love for all people. God, help us when we fall short and fall into our old thoughts and ways. Hold us close. Move our hearts and thoughts to seek you in the lives of every person you invite us to encounter. In your name we pray. Amen. We sing. Friends, I've missed it a couple different weeks, so I'm just going to note real uh, right now, real quick, before we head out. There are, because I've been asked and I wanted to note, there are these handmade crosses at either entrance on the tables. These were made by uh, a family member 
family member of one of our members. Uh, he makes a lot of these different styles of crosses, and you'll see different crosses up there. He just wants you to take one. Just take them, take it home, put it on your desk, put it somewhere where you would like to have it. They're totally free. They're just made. It's something that this artist likes to make, and he gives them away to churches. So I just want to commend this to you. If this is something that you would like to grab, they are all at this table and the one at the entrance. People of God, before we depart, may we never forget. Our Lord is our manna from heaven, who feeds and sustains us for God's glory. Our Lord is the worker of miracles, who moves through us and among us to proclaim God's justice. Our Lord is the bread of life, who reveals mercy for us to show others. I want to invite you, as you are able and comfortable, to turn towards someone who is near you, and we will bless each other. Be blessed. In the name of the Creator, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, this day and every day, wherever you may go. Amen. Off we go, led forth by Christ. Thanks be to God.